In this section, we'll look at uh, Theodore Roosevelt's imperialism, sort of give it an overview, and also discuss uh, one of his earlier imperialist adventures, uh, construction of the Panama Canal. The United States had seen much imperialism during McKinley's presidency, but when McKinley was uh, assassinated in 1901 and Teddy Roosevelt became president, Roosevelt became the most overtly imperialist president in history. Roosevelt bleed in sort of a, a doggy dog Machiavellian world in which inter international relations, uh, you know, was was power and, and not ideology ruled. Roosevelt was strongly influenced by a book by an American naval captain, Alfred T. Mann. Uh, it was known as The Influence of Sea Power on History, first published in 1890. In it, Mann argued that the possession of colonies was meaningless without control of the oceans. The oceans were the jugular of trade. In short, a, a strong navy was essential. Roosevelt strongly believed this, and his administration quickly began modernizing and expanding the American Navy. It developed much larger steel ships with innovative designs and newer steam turbines, each with 10 12-inch guns capable of, uh, of, you know, and were capable of long-distance travel. The, uh, the U.S. painted the, its entire fleet uh, a, a stark white, which was the uh, Navy's peacetime color scheme, and thus the fleet became known as the uh, Great White Fleet. Jumping a little ahead chronologically, but uh, late in his presidency in December 1907, Roosevelt did dispatch the 16 battleship of the Atlantic Fleet, uh, his Great White Fleet, on a trip to circumnavigate the globe. It, uh, the Great White Fleet was to visit foreign ports, sort of reinforcing treaties and proclaiming American goodwill. Courtesy calls in, parts, in ports of, of foreign nations had become commonplace by the late 19th century, but nothing of this magnitude. It was uh, unspoken, of course, that the real purpose was to project American power to intimidate would-be enemies. The uh, around-the-world trip was successful and ended after Roosevelt had left office in February 1909. The Great White Fleet was instructive because it nicely illustrated Roosevelt's foreign policy. Roosevelt declared that the United States should, quote, speak softly but carry a big stick. The Great White Fleet was clearly Roosevelt's big stick. America would not seek conflict, but was powerful uh, for all circumstances in case one arose. Roosevelt claimed that the uh, phrase was a West African proverb, but this is debatable. In any event, Roosevelt first used the phrase in a conversation at the Minnesota State Fair in September 1901, just after uh, he assumed office, and repeated it often throughout his presidency. Upon assuming office in 1901, Roosevelt quickly turned his attention to the Caribbean. Britain and France had been trying to build a canal across the narrow parts of Central America, and Roosevelt believed that the United States should be the nation to do so, since it was more crucial to our economy and defense. Again, it was a reflection of the Monroe Doctrine. Roosevelt first pressured Britain to give up her claims, which she did so in the Hay Pontefont Treaty in November 1901. Britain was then engaged in a, a bloody war against the Afrikaners in South Africa. The, the Dutch uh, descendants there, and, and they welcomed a closer alliance with the United States. It, it should be noted that in 1850, the U.S. and Britain had agreed that if a canal were ever built, no sole nation would control it. Uh, but the, that 1850 had proved meaningless and was replaced by the Hay Pontefont Treaty. The French, meanwhile, had their own canal under construction further south in the area of Panama. Panama at the time wasn't an independent nation like it is today, but part of the South American country of Colombia. In 1879, a French company had secured permission from Colombia to build a canal across their land in the Panama area. The French, however, had encountered, you know, yellow fever and problems in construction, a lot of mismanagement, and uh, they went bankrupt. And seeking to recoup its losses, the French company offered to sell its assets, including its agreement and concessions from the Colombian government, to the United States for 109 million bucks. In 1902, after the French had lowered their price to 40 million, Congress authorized President Roosevelt to accept the offer. The following year, 1903, Secretary of State Hay signed an agreement with the Colombian diplomat 
granting the United States a 99-year lease on the, uh, on the proposed canal for a down payment of $10 million and an annual fee of a quarter million. A problem soon emerged, however, when the Colombian legislature, seeking better terms, rejected the deal. Ticked off, Roosevelt hatched a plan with Felipe Bernal Varilla, uh, an official with the bankrupt Fritch Company, who was also dismayed that his companies lost the American $40 million. Working from a uh, New York hotel room, Bernal Varilla organized a rebellion of Panamanians against the nation of Colombia. While his uh, wife stitched a flag for the new nation, he wrote a Declaration of Independence and a Constitution. When the revolution occurred as planned on November 3, 1903, Roosevelt had dispatched a naval fleet to grant the uh, a, a, a naval fleet rather to guard against the uh, Colombian reinforcements or putting down the the rebellion. Proclaiming Panama's independence, Bernal Varilla appointed himself its first ambassador to the, to the United States, and the U.S. quickly recognized the new nation of Panama. Hay and Bernal Varilla quickly concluded the hay Bernal Varilla Treaty of November 1903. The U.S. got a 10-mile wide strip of land across Panama, quote, in perpetuity, on the terms earlier rejected by the Colombian government. Anti-imperialist Congress were, were angry, of course, but Roosevelt dismissed the entire debate. He said, quote, I took the canal and let Congress debate, and while Congress uh, does so, the canal goes on as well. Roosevelt never regretted his actions, but in 1922, the United States Congress uh, did authorize an additional $25 million payment, uh, maybe something to relieve America's conscience. To build the canal, the American Army Corps of Engineers hired uh, thousands of laborers who cleared vast uh, swamps, excavated 240 million cubic yards of earth, and constructed a, a series of immense locks. The uh, land wasn't flat. It was the largest construction job in history, using more concrete than ever before, and uh, requiring the world's largest electrical generator to operate the lock uh, doors. It was an engineering feat that took eight full years. More than 25,000 workers died of malaria, yellow fever, and extreme heat. In November 1906, Roosevelt visited the construction of the canal, and in doing so, he became the first president to leave the United States during his presidency, a trip made possible by uh, improving communications and transportation. In the end, the Panama Canal was completed in 1914, just as World War I began. This concludes this section sort of introducing Roosevelt's uh, imperialism and discussing the Panama Canal.